Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about .NET Aspire. .NET Aspire is an opinionated tech stack that by default provides some key services to your distributed cloud applications. Services such as telemetry, health checks, and reliability. You can also use this tooling to automate the inclusion of other services. Um, Aspire also provides some other features that I'm going to cover in this video. Before you begin, you will need the latest version of Visual Studio. I have Visual Studio 2022. And because Aspire just went to January release a couple of weeks ago, that, it, that was during the Microsoft Build Conference in late May of 2024, then I selected check for updates, made sure that I have the most recent tooling here inside of Visual Studio. I did that a few days ago. I'm good there. Uh, you will also need to have Docker Desktop running. So if you don't have it, it's a free install. You can install it, make sure that it's running. And the reason is that .NET Aspire requires containers to run some of its services locally. The easiest way to show off the capabilities of .NET Aspire is to create a sample application. And there's a template for doing that. I'll select File, New Project from inside of Visual Studio, and I'll search among the templates for Aspire. And there is, you notice here, a .NET Aspire starter application. That's what I'm going to do. It creates a simple web app that calls an API um, and uses all the tooling of Aspire. I'm going to put this into my GCast folder, and I'll call it uh, GCast Aspire like that. Next, and there are options here to configure HTTPS, uh, which is just part of the web application, but also you use Redis cache, and that's where it requires a support of container runtime like Docker Desktop, and also create a test project. So you can uncheck these things if you want to, but let's do that to see everything that happens. When I click Create, it's going to create a .NET solution, and in that solution will be a few projects. We have, for example, a web project right here. If you just create a simple web application, you'd see that. The web project has a dependency. It'll call this API service here. And we also have some unit tests that were created automatically right here. But we also have two projects that you might not be familiar with. And these are the Aspire project. This one right here is the app host project. And it contains a program.cs right here. And this one here is the service defaults project, and it contains some some extension methods. Let's start with the app host. Notice it's bold. This is the thing that's going to run first. And in here, we've got some code here. First, we're going to create a builder. And we do create a builder when we do a web application. So you might already be familiar with that. In fact, there is down here in our web application, you can see one of the first things it does is creates a web application builder and does some things with that. This is a little bit different. This is a distributed application builder. And with that distributed application builder, this is designed for lots of small components that we're going to tie together uh, as services. And here's one service. Here's Add Redis. So Builder has a method called Add Redis. It understands Redis. We do give this a name so we can refer to it later. And that's significant because we're going to use that name if we want to refer to the connection string of we connect to Azure Redis. So we don't have to store information like connection strings directly in our code. We can put them into configuration somewhere. We can change them as we move from one environment to the other. So we're going to add Redis right here. There and store it in the variable called cache right here. And I'll just show you that Builder has some other methods, add connection string, add container, add executable. So we can add some other things as well. But right now we're just going to add the cache. And then we're also going to add this API service. And the API service is builder.addProject. And we specify what the project is, why well, it's this API service, which is right here. And we give it a name, API service. So later on, we can refer to it. And we're going we're gonna to build up the whole thing and all the dependencies here. Builder.addProjects. This is our web project here. And we're going to give that a name, web front end, so we can call it later. And in that, we're going to do something like with external HTTP endpoint. So this method right here says expose my web front end 
to the public internet, expose some HTTP endpoint to the public internet. These two down here with reference, they will set a references to, from the web front end to this Redis cache and to this API service right here. And they'll set them in that order. So they'll, they'll not only set them, but they'll also start these applications. So they'll start up the front end, and then it'll start up the Redis cache, and then it'll set up the API service. So this is really convenient. It saves me the trouble of coming into here and doing the setting the startup projects, which is here. So if I want to come in here and say select multiple projects, then I can do it this way, and that's fine, but uh, this isn't checked into source control. This is. So I'm saving one step for the viewers when they pull out of source control. And then I'm going to run this application. Well, I'm running, remember, I'm running app host. And app host is going to start up these other applications here. The next thing I want to show you is this service defaults application and the extension methods in here, the extension methods to an iHost application builder. We have here uh, methods to configure open telemetry, add default health checks, add service discovery. This is all under add service defaults right here. Um, it's going to call all these. So this is the extension method here, and it's going to call by automatically. When it gets called, it'll automatically configure open telemetry, configure the health checks, add all the service discoveries, and do some add some resiliency, which does some built-in retry logic. If it tries to call a service, and that service is, is down. So these things get added by default. These, these are things, in fact, if I can look at the code in here, this is a just configuration. If I go down here, these are methods right inside of here. Adding open telemetry, for instance, sets this. So if you wanted to modify that in some way, you can. And um, you can, if you want to step through this code, you can do that as well. You can see this commented code out here already that suggests things that you might want to do to change it. And then this add service defaults is called from these applications. So from the web application, we have a line right at the beginning, builder dot add service defaults. That's a web application builder. And we've added those ex that extension method here. So it should add health checks and open telemetry and resiliency. We also tell it to add the Redis output cache and which one we're going to refer to it. Remember by that string cache right here. That's gets, gets called. Same thing is happening in the API service. Here we're just adding the service defaults. So we're starting up adding open telemetry. So these these things Microsoft provided open telemetry. They provided resiliency. They provided I did the health checks a long time ago, but it was up to the developer to implement them, to add them to their applications. By using Aspire, these things get added automatically. Now I've shown you the key pieces to this. Let's go ahead and run the application. And you can see when I ran it, it ran this dashboard. It opened up this dashboard right here. And in this dashboard, we've got a few things we could do. We could look at these endpoints, like the container cache. This is not exposed to the public internet, but we did tell our web front end to be exposed to the front, front to the public internet. So we can click on this and actually see the web front end. And this is just a, sam a sample application that does this, uh, some static HTML here. There's a counter here that's taking advantage of the cache, so it's remembering state. Uh, and there's a weather app here, which calls the API, which returns the weather on certain dates. We can also go here and look at this console. And in here, anything that we're writing out to the console, you'll be able to see in here. So I select the web front end. There are things that are being written to the console automatically by the application. And we can see that right here. It's a good way to check the logs. This isn't a substitute. This is not a substitute for application insights. Uh, 
this is you'll still if you want to retain this information long term, you want to configure something and set it up inside of Azure Monitor. I've got videos on how to do that, but this is a nice quick check on the current state of the application. We can look at this structured tab and see some of the traces that are going on in this application. So for example, if I click on This one right here, you can see which methods called which other methods and how long those methods took and which ran in parallel and so on. Uh, let's go over here to the traces and in here we've got some more information about individual traces. Let's look at that one right here, how long everything took. And then under metrics, if I select a resource, I can start looking at metrics and seeing how many requests we had, number of active requests we have over time in this case. So all kinds of metrics that you can just check on, give you a quick snapshot into the health of your application now. Again, not a substitute for application insights. If you want to do some kind of long-term logging to do some analysis, but if you want to know how things are going now, this is a great tool for doing so. Let me just stop this application. You notice that if I decide, if I've already got an application that I've built, uh, and it's a, I want to make it a distributed web application, something more cloud native, I can right click on my main application here, my web application, and there is an option to add a .NET Aspire orchestrator support. I'm not going to do that because what this will do is it will create these right here and I already have these projects right here. So what I would recommend doing is to look at this default template project, step through it, understand how things are working, and then create your own project using those same patterns. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.